This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey photographer, Jessica Whitaker here. And in this video, we are going to be talking all about memory cards, the unsung hero behind our cameras. Having the right memory card is imperative to being able to take photos at a high speed. So in this video, we are going to be covering what cards I recommend to buy, when to delete your memory cards, why and how to double shoot on your memory cards, even if you do not have a dual slot. And we're going to solve the problem of why your camera might be slow at taking photos. You don't need to upgrade your camera. You might need to just upgrade your memory card. Before we get into it, I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this free photography video. A photo speaks a thousand words, but a polished and professional portfolio can get us those thousand dollar clients. Enter Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for websites and domains. Photographers, it's time to be done settling for slow loading websites with tedious plugins. I trust Squarespace's all-in-one platform to keep me booked and busy. Pick from one of their dozens of contemporary drag and drop layouts, host your custom domain and email with them, and even conduct successful email campaigns. Everything you need to run a successful photography business under their umbrella and at your fingertips. You can head to squarespace.com to begin your free trial and when you are ready to launch your beautiful professional website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Jessica Whitaker to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Let's begin the video out with a common question and problem that a lot of photographers experience regardless of what kind of camera you might be using. If you're using an older camera from maybe the 2010s, or if you're using a more current Canon Rebel, or maybe you shoot with something like a Mark IV. If you find that there is a delay in recording the images on your camera, so this means that if every shot takes a moment to load and you are unable to take more photos because the current one is being recorded or maybe it's not every shot but it's every 30 or so, the problem is not your camera. The problem is your memory card is too slow. Now this doesn't mean that it's not big enough. So let's say you're shooting with a 12 gigabyte card. It doesn't mean that you need to upgrade to a larger card such as a 64 because those numbers are just the size of the card itself. It has nothing to do with the speed. You need to upgrade your card entirely to a high performing one. So I will be recommending a SD card and CF card that is able to shoot with no delays, no problem, high speed continuous all day long. I will talk about that in a few points, but don't sell your camera because you're just going to have the same problem if you do not upgrade your card. So hang tight because I'll be sharing my favorites or you can sneak a peek at them down in the description box below. Number two is why and how you can double shoot with your memory cards. I'm going to be talking about if your camera has a dual card slot so you're able to take two memory cards into your camera or if you have a single card slot, I'm going to be addressing both. So hang tight and listen up. The reason why you want to double shoot is as a backup. You want to make sure that in case one card corrupts, you still have the files on another card. On a camera that has dual cards, you are able to insert two memory cards at once. On my personal camera, the 5D Mark IV, I have one SD card slot and one CF card slot. So I do have to purchase both of those types of memory cards. But on the newer models of cameras, I'm finding that most of them have dual SD card slots. It's not enough to just pop them in. You have to set it to record to multiple cards and how you're gonna find that out is a simple Google search of your model and record to multiple cards. Entry level cameras, however, do not have these dual card slots. So what do you do then? This is what I recommend. I know that spending money on SD cards and CF cards is not the most exciting thing, but it is a business expense. And I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite SD and CF cards that are fast and quite affordable. But what if your camera does not have two memory cards? How do you record to multiple? Number three, what I suggest for those with an entry level camera with one slot for a memory card is to simply use multiple cards for your session. Even if you could fit the entire photo shoot on one memory card, what I want you to do is have three different cards that you are gonna switch out every third of the way through the photo shoot. Now you could do one outfit on one card, 
one outfit on the other, but I recommend spreading it across three. Yes, this is a hassle. It can be a bit of a headache and it might make you want to upgrade, but it is so important that you take this extra step to protect your images. And you could even have a fanny pack with your memory cards in them, or maybe on your camera backpack, you can get a little pouch that clips on with your memory cards for easy access and to help you remember. And the reason why I recommend doing three versus one outfit on one, one outfit on the other, is again, in case your card corrupts, you don't just have one outfit from this session, you're going to have both outfits at least in that middle card. Number four, let's talk about when I recommend to format your memory cards. Format, not delete. Now, if you delete your images, from your camera, you risk not having the files completely wiped because there might be files on this memory card that are from other cameras you've used or other projects hiding out, taking up space that your camera is not going to show or recognize. So you want to format your card to make sure that it is completely clear. And if you find that you have a large memory card that is only recording a few hundred images and you know it's capable of at least a thousand, you might need to format the card because there might be other files hanging out on there. I recommend formatting your cards after you have delivered the session. I have my backups on two hard drives, but I have my SD card still with my files just as a triple quadruple backup. Now, some photographers might disagree and say that having the hard drive backup is enough, but when it comes to my client sessions, especially elopements, wedding photography, I wanna make sure that I have the original form of the file saved on those SD cards, just in case something got looked over in exporting. I even do it for my YouTube videos because I found on occasion where I have to go back and grab a clip from the SD card because it didn't get imported one way or another, maybe it was hiding out in a different folder that was overlooked. It gives me peace of mind, but it's also personal preference. Maybe though you do not have enough memory cards on hand to be able to do this. So just consider keeping one copy of the SD cards available for you as a backup and the other card, remember your backup card, you could possibly consider formatting that. If you can swing it, I highly encourage it. Number five, my favorite SD and CF card brand is from SanDisk and I use and love the SanDisk Extreme Pro. You can get the SD card on Amazon for about $35 for a 128 gigabyte, which for me with my Mark IV records about 2,500 raw images. Or if you are not interested in shopping on Amazon, then you can go to Shop Moments and it's a great Amazon alternative. They sell the cards as well. I'll have both versions linked down below. I'll also link my favorite CF card reader because computers do not have CF card inserts anymore. Yours might have a SD card insert, but the CF cards you will need a reader and there are a lot of horrible readers out there where the pins inside will bend and I have found a great one that is reliable that I've used for years after going through a lot of cheap versions and I'll also have my favorite SD card reader if you are an Apple user and you do not have an SD card slot in your computer anymore. Number six, what size card should you buy? So like I just said, I can get for $35 128 gigabyte size and that is what I recommend. For me, on my Mark IV, I'm able to get about 2,500 raw images. And in terms of video footage, I can get about 45 minutes on my Mark IV for YouTube videos. Now, chances are you're gonna be buying multiple cards because you might be implementing this dual card system or be recording to three cards at once. 128 gigabytes is gonna be maybe a bit unrealistic for the price point at multiple cards. So consider going for something like a 32 or a 64. It's all going to be up to you, but what I personally recommend, use and love, is the 128 gigabyte. Photographer, you might be thinking, it is time for an upgrade with my camera equipment, whether that's the body, lens, or a whole new kit, I am going to teach you how to be a conscious consumer and use financial wisdom when purchasing your gear in my YouTube video, When You Should Upgrade. I'll see you over in that video. Be sure to hit subscribe so that you're the first to know when new free photography videos for your business come out. And if you're looking to join a kind, encouraging, and inclusive photography community, come on over to the free Build and Bloom Photography Facebook group. 
Follow along over on Instagram at Jessica Whitaker for daily tips, tools, and resources to grow your photography business. I believe in you and I believe in your business and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.